Well, come. You're well and you've come. That just came out. Glad that you're here. I'm glad it's raining outside to justify the call we had to make today. Uh, boy. Um, but hey, God is in the house. He welcomes us always into his presence wherever we are. It's so good to be here in the house together. You've got your song sheets. Hope you'll sing at the top of your lungs and enjoy what uh, we've we'll prepared for today to, to enter us into God's presence with great joy. So God bless you. Let's go. All right, church family, let's stand together. I actually don't have to tell the live stream people to stand up because there is no live stream today. Those who are here in the sanctuary, please stand. Uh, if you know these songs, belt them out. Look down at your song sheets as needed. And uh, let's have some fun together this morning. And I'll say one more thing. There's no child care today downstairs, but if parents need to use it, the, the toddler room downstairs is open for you to watch you here on the TV. All right? But we, we, we welcome everybody to stay out there. Just have a great time. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Let's sing together. <laughs> Thank you. 
we're going to continue to sing together. Sing with joy, our God is for us.
celebration. And you know, deep down within uh, our hearts, there's come the song, doesn't it? That our whole life would breathe out this praise that God is due. We love this song because it just helps us with the bottom of the toes at the top of our head, show them the praise that they got for this earth.
But uh, let's, let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that we can gather and, and just to come to praise you. Thank you for loving us and what you are doing in our life. Whether we are here in this building or if we would have been outside a club at all. Whether it's in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening. Whether we are walking around the block getting some exercise or cycling. God, we can always praise you. You are a great God, and we thank you so much for what you are doing. So continue to be with us this morning as we call upon you, as we sing out to you. Work in our lives, speak to us, challenge us with the message that we'll hear very soon. And we thank you, Lord, that we can join together as, the, the, as we can just come together, not as individuals, but as the family of God, uh -huh. and praise you. What a small taste of what it would be like when we get to heaven. And we thank you, Lord, that we can experience that now. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you take a seat and just have a few right. announcements for us this morning. We know and have heard a few of these things, but just again a reminder, VBS is happening very soon, from July 11th to the 15th, and I know Pastor Bruce is still looking for people to help and volunteer, so please contact him, reach out to him, drive by his house, bring him some chicken noodle soup, he's not feeling well right now, but, uh, but please reach out to him, give him a call, maybe a little bit later, let him sleep this morning for a little bit, and then everybody call him at 3 o'clock, okay, and uh, from 5, we'll keep him busy, but inquire with what the help that he needs and he would love to have you if it's for a day or for the entire week by all means you can also go to our web page and check out some more of the details and some of the needs that they uh, that we can help to bring to contribute with some instructions that's listed there so again on our web page uh, we've also heard about the canada summer games that's coming to niagara falls uh, to the region here in august but we have something special being planned and uh, this month so on June 25th, there's a special outreach orientation that will be taking place and some training. And uh, again, you can go to our webpage and see some of those little uh, details there. But you can speak to Pastor Jim Ball or to Don Stoffer about that, and they can help to fill you in for June 25th as well. A few weeks ago, we had our annual missions uh, weekend, missions conference, when we uh, had our guest, Mission Eurasia, who came and joined with us. And we had a project goal of $9,000. I can say from what I read in the recent email sent to me, we have just received just under $12,000. And uh, not, uh, all those proceeds except for uh, a small portion will be going to Daystar Ministry, but the rest will be heading over towards uh, Ukraine and with Mission Eurasia and of course with Tony in Poland, who's been helping with refugees from the war as well. Uh, last announcement I have for us, if you are on Facebook and you are connected with one another here within the church, we know of a family that has been dear to our, our church family for a while, and, um, and I, I have had the privilege, I know Pastor Bruce had when they were kids, and of course myself, as them as you, and uh, most of them have now grown up and are done with uh, high school and so on, but they are moving out to New Brunswick. And the family has already done a number of trips back and forth, and it's the Gilbert family. So they are moving, except for one. Cassidy is not moving. She just yeah. told me she's staying behind uh, to get educated and, uh, and work. And, but the offer for from uh, mom and dad have been to come on out whenever you wish. So, but yeah. Sierra, you and Ben and the rest of the family take off on Friday, and. Uh, yeah. You know, I was thinking about that moments ago as the service started, and it's like I remember Sierra when she came out from Valleyway and uh, got connected to the youth group. Loved the underground youth ministry so much, and she brought her entire class. Wow. Yeah. Then she brought nice. the next class, the grade sevens and eights all came out. Then she went to Battlefield. Woo! And then all of the ministry took off, and it's just, it's never been the same since. So, Sierra, thank you so much for just being a passion of having fun, but loving God, and uh, we've had a chance to see that develop. And Cassie, you have been involved with part of that on occasion as well, and uh, definitely bringing friends and just the passion. So it's great to see uh, you two just growing up in the Lord, but also this new adventure. And, you know, sad on your behalf because you're not going with them. 
Oh 
like this song. I'm out. You were the word at the beginning. One went out on a lonely sky. I love this song.
These four songs that we're going to sing, and they're on the insert of your lyric sheet, these are some of the songs I learned how to play guitar on. I learned how to lead worship with these songs. And so it's wonderful to be able to come back to them. I'm calling it our epic 90s worship mashup. So those of you that went to church a lot in the 90s or around 2000, you'll, you'll know all of these. If you're like our bass player, born in 2006, who said to us at worship team breakfast, yeah. I don't know any of these songs, maybe. <laughs> If you don't know any of these songs, that's okay. Very nice. If you feel comfortable to sing along, please do. But they all speak of this longing for God. Thankfulness for his love. Just the desire to be near to him and hear from him. So what a good way to lead into our time in the Word. So let's sing together some songs from the 90s that many of us know. And
May the words of that song and the words on our hearts, may we see you in our study of your words today. Thank you for the time you've given us already, Lord. We're excited about what's still to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated this time. All right. <laughs> you love this song, right? All right. Great song. Great to have such a big team, and and yet even with all that team, I hear you guys mm -hmm. to lift our voices up together. Okay, lots of us have kiddos, right? I wonder if your kids were cut from the same cloth mine were. Mm -hmm. One finished like watching a, a movie like say, Star Wars. Suddenly, these makeshift or imaginary, uh, you know, lightsabers would come out, and everybody would be trying to see who's the most, you know, fierce Jedi. Or after watching a Jackie Chan movie, they suddenly transformed into ninjas and trying to scale the walls. Well, my first mentor in the art of imitative personality transformation—I think that's what it's called—anyway, was a guy named Burbo uh, in a show called *They Saw Tour of the Saw Tour*. I'm wondering what planet. <laughs> Well, actually, French educational TV in the 70s when I was in grade two, okay? And so this guy, uh, that's the planet, okay? So this guy named Burbo got himself into all kinds of crazy situations, but he had this magical bracelet, right? Kind of like a big, wadi, gaudy watchman. And uh, at just that right moment when everything was getting all real uh, tense, he just lift up his wrist and pull down his sleeve and with a shake of his wrist, he'd either disappear or reappear or magical things would happen. And so uh, in my vast world of you know, grade two, everybody that was seven years old wanted to imitate Burbo. And so we had our homemade little you know, wristbands and we'd get out in the playground and see who could win the match you know, with that magical shake of our wristband. You had to be there. But uh, someone has said that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Now, I doubt flattery is what the Apostle Paul had in mind uh, when he wrote to the Corinthian believers, this is in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, he said, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. And then in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, he says, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Now, Paul wasn't a superhero. Huh. But he was a follower of Christ and a hero of our faith. And many of his teachings have etched their way into our memory and, and, uh, and, and impacted us over the years. Though you're not going to find me, you know, uh, looking for a crowd to stone me or getting out on the ship heading into a hurricane so I could shipwreck. I mean, we're not going to imitate those kind of things of Paul. But the imitation Paul urged was to watch and to follow how his faith affected his thinking how his faith affected his attitude, how his faith affected his priorities, and on his faith outlook, so that he could stay on track with God and the purposes God had for him. And through his letter to the Philippians, there were many ways Paul encouraged others to follow his example. He also urged us to follow his example so that we could stand firm and stand unshaken as we follow after Christ. So I want to take a few minutes to focus on a short list of imitatables, imitatables from Paul to help keep our minds in gear as believers in Jesus Christ. Maybe these thoughts need to take you there, and for others, we're there, and we need to follow hard after Christ. Paul concluded his letter with some very important mind-shaping values and life-shaping practices that every follower of Jesus Christ needs to adopt, to really think about. Our thoughts matter. Negative thinking will lead to negative living, is the implication. And we see that all around us. We see anger and bitterness and selfishness and fear and blaming others and refusing to accept responsibility or to change. The antidote that our culture has found is kind of in the popular saying, think good thoughts. You've heard that. 
I hope you've said it in the right way, maybe not the wrong way. Think good thoughts. Our culture thinks that good thoughts are even things like we know as prayer, right? Conversation with Almighty God. And they, you know, people who don't get that just sort of think that we're tossing good thoughts in other people's direction, right? Or, or you know, putting good vibes out of the universe. Uh, well, you know, that if we just think good, positive thoughts, then good things are going to happen. Not true. Good thoughts don't project positive energy in anybody's direction. We don't have that superpower, right? But, <clears throat> however, there are some very good thoughts that the Apostle Paul does want us and urge us to think about. And that's listed for us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. It's on your sheets. It's so actually, let's read it together. Yeah. You find that on your sheets under the title, Think Good Thoughts. Here's some good thoughts for us to be thinking. All right, from the Apostle Paul, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 9. Y'all there? Yeah. Ready, set, go? Okay. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. We're going to dive into that, and pay attention because there's going to be a few quiz questions after. All right, quite a list of things that Paul lists for us, and so we're going to unpack that and ask the all-important question: Well, why? And then, like, how? But let's start with the what. What are we supposed to be thinking about? What's our thought life supposed to be like? Here are six questions to think about before you speak or act. First of all, is it true? Is it true? Whatever is true. Think about that. Before you open your mouth, is what you have to say valid and honest and reliable? Are you speaking truth? Does it even have the ring of truth about it? A man was stopped by a game warden with two big coolers full of fresh fish. And... Uh, they were in water, and he says, do you have a license to catch those fish? He said, no, 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 but it doesn't matter. These are my pet fish. Pet <laughs> fish. Oh, yeah, I bring them from home, and I, I toss them in the lake and let them swim around for a little while. When I whistle, they jump back in the, in the cooler, and I take them home. <laughs> he said, come on. What do you take me for? Right? He says, yeah, I know. It's true. I'll show you. It really works. Okay, this I've got to see. And so he dumps them back into the water and waits for a little while, and, and then... He says, well, well what? Uh, when are you going to call them back? Call who back? <laughs> fish. <laughs> what fish? <laughs> <laughs> Truth isn't what you can fool people into believing. Mm -hmm. The lawn signs that littered our streets until last week should convince us of that. This question rules out all that is dishonest and untrue and shady and unreliable, urging us as Christ followers to think, to act, and to live the truth, whatever is true. Second, is it honorable? Whatever is honorable, is your thought life honorable? That means noble, uh, worthy of respect. That word is used in 1 Timothy 3.1 to describe the role of an elder. It's a noble task, Paul wrote. Do you ponder things that are noble, <laughs> that are respectable? <laughs> We have kind of somewhere in the range of 10,000 thoughts per day, someone has said. That's a lot of stuff continually floating in that gray matter up there, right? So every one of those thoughts, you know, sends an impulse or a decision or an idea that will influence what you do and what you don't do. Our thoughts matter because they will tend to generate outcomes according mm -hmm. to their kind. Yeah. And that's why the Apostle Paul tells us to think worthy thoughts, worthy of attention, worthy of consideration. Worthy of action. Third, is it just? It says whatever is just or whatever is right. Not limited by what we might think, you know, what's right in our eyes. But we're talking about what's right in God's eyes. His righteous standard. That's the qualification here. So do the things you think about that you want to do, that you want to have, if they were suddenly on video for everybody to see, would that be embarrassing? <laughs> whatever is just. Whatever is right. People in the cultural moment that we live, um, 
Don't accept that there's a right and a wrong. It's whatever's right for you. Of course, if anyone seriously believes that there aren't any moral absolutes, any real rights or wrongs, just ask them if you can, you know, borrow their phone and take a look for a second, and then just walk away. Suddenly you know there's a right and a wrong, right? People, you know, everybody has moral absolutes. And she's looking up the Bible, like, <laughs> moral absolutes, right? Everyone has a moral code. It gets twisted, it gets deceived. But the code is there, and God's code of what is just and what is right needs to shape our thinking. So think good thoughts, thoughts that are right. Follow after that. Don't think about all the possible exceptions, all the loopholes, find excuses for dismissing or lowering God's standards. Just the assumption here is that upon you know believing what is right, you will want to you know think on that and then act out of that and do what is right and what is just. Fourth question: Is it pure? Whatever is pure. This pushes further into this whole area of moral purity. Is your thought life clean? We used to say, get your mind out of the gutter, right? Because kind of wallowing in there, it gets full of ugh, you know? Ever recommend a movie to someone you thought it was a really good movie, and they come back and say, oh, well, there's this, this scene and that scene and those words and that, you know? And suddenly we think that we realize that our standard might have been different than the standard we thought, or maybe, you know, it was uh, just a whole lot less of a standard than it should be. <laughs> and that's kind of a need for correction. If I'm going to think about pure stuff, it's going to have to be in terms of what a pure, holy God urges me to think about and flush out all the other stuff. For those who live in the promise and the hope of heaven, 1 John 3, verse 3 says, Everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Fifth question, is it lovely? Is it lovely? Think about whatever is lovely. Sounds like a, what a woman would, would say when given flowers. Oh, how lovely. Of course, right? Um, this is the only place that word appears in our Bible. And it refers to things that really indeed are beautiful and pleasing and attractive rather than being, say, distorted by sin. We're to think about things that draw the right kind of attention like flowers do to their recipients. But this is really more than just surface or emotional responses. Some years ago, Rebecca showed me a te video testimony of a woman who lived her life badly deformed. She had a disease that ate her muscle tissue, leaving her essentially skin hanging on bones, and we would say maybe not very attractive. However, as she held up note cards to explain her story, her, her nails were nicely done, her eyes just above the page just radiated warmth and compassion, and it was really a lovely picture. Lovely to see my wife think of her that way, too. You know, just to think about those things that are truly lovely. Mm -hmm. The sixth, is it commendable? Whatever is commendable, think about that. Think about what you're going to say, what you're going to do. Is it even worthy of a moment's contemplation? Or is it kind of tacky or crude or just a waste of mental energy? Mm -hmm. Good thoughts focus on things that are positive, not negative. Things that build up, not things that tear down. We might just need to edit our words on the fly sometime, but think about whatever is commendable. Is it admirable? Is it good to talk about? Someone said, without freedom of speech, we wouldn't know who the idiots are. <laughs> okay, true enough, let's not join them. Rather, think about what's commendable before it exits the mouth. Then, as if to capture that list in a couple of catch-all categories, the Apostle adds, if there is anything, any, any excellence, right, anything morally or ethically excellent or virtuous, there's an overall category for our thoughts. And if there's anything worthy of praise, is it something that God would approve of? Now, that's a lot of things to think about. We could just sit there and ponder that all day before we take a, any action on our thoughts, I realize. But it's thinking and dwelling on truth and honor or rightness, holiness or purity, lovely things, commendable things, pursuing excellence or virtue, and true approval of God so that he is praised. These are all part of that intake that will have a Christ-like output from our thoughts and through our lives. Well, that's where we get into the why. Why think these good, God-given, God-oriented, God-sourced thoughts? In verse 9, Paul concludes what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things. 
He served as an example for them. Paul is putting his own life and his own example in there in order to invite others to take notice, to follow him as he followed after Christ. Now, we don't get to watch Paul. We don't get to watch Jesus. We have a lot to read about that. We can <laughs> see this example in these great ones. We're not given an option in imitating Christ. We do have an option whether we do it exactly as Paul did, or as your pastor does, or some other person you look up to. If you get offended at how someone else does it, then find a better example. Better yet, just follow after Jesus. He's the one that we need to pattern our thinking after. The term Christian means Christ ones. Right? So those who by faith, those who by test testimony are declaring, I am in Christ. And Christ is in me. Christ became what we are in order to redeem what we were and change us into what he wants us to be. His perfect standards for us, for our thinking and for our actions, they never change. They are trustworthy standards. And they're here in the Bible for all of us to read. So as he does his cleanup work in us, his goal, Jesus' goal, is to make in us the kind of people that are remarkably like-minded to him. Can you imagine that? That's what he wants to make us into. So as we're thinking good thoughts, as we're thinking about these things, seeking to practice them as we read them and as we understand them, as we see Paul even encouraging the practice of it, then our lives will take that shape. How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? <coughs> this is part of the lifelong process of day-to-day -day practices for Christian believers. I realize it's not going to all happen today, right? But how are we going to do that? We all know the garbage in, garbage out principle, right? So the things I take in that really aren't worthy of a moment's contemplation, they're going to have an impact on us unless we can just kind of bounce them back off and, and get rid of them. Mm. So Paul wants our <coughs> things that fill our minds to be these kinds of good, good thoughts. Read God's Word. Read qualified reflections on what it means. And think on those things so they, they repattern some of our other thoughts. The New King James Version of Proverbs 3, 23, verse 7 reads, As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. <laughs> the implication is what you think today, you become tomorrow. And your thought life is the best predictor of your next actions. Expositor Ray Pritchard listed some of those Realities. He says, if you think you can't, you probably won't. If you think angry thoughts, <coughs> angry words are sure to follow. If you fill your mind with sexual fantasies, your body will find a way to fulfill those desires. If you dwell on your problems, they will soon overwhelm you. If you feel like a victim, soon you will become one. If you give way to worry, don't be surprised if you get ulcers. <laughs> if you expect defeat, you'll probably lose. If you dwell on rejection, you will set yourself up for even more rejection. And if you focus on how others misunderstand you, you'll become angry and bitter. The idea here is that sooner or later, thoughts translate into reality. No wonder the Apostle Paul urges to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians 10, 5. So here's the thing. Paul was inviting us to imitate him as he imitated Christ. Or we can skip over Paul and just go after imitating Christ. Because bottom line, our thoughts need to be conformed to Christ and to shape us to be more like Christ. He is the greatest example for all of us in all of these thought virtues because he fully embodies them. He is the truth. He is the most noble son of God. He's the standard of justice and righteousness. He's the fountain of purity. He is altogether <coughs> lovely. He is the admirable savior. He is the source of all virtue and excellence. He's the one whom God entirely approves. So as we align with Jesus by faith and pattern our thinking after him, our thoughts will be transformed. We are not to be defined by passing, fading, broken, and wasteful things of this world. Jesus, uh, because of Jesus, we are not who we think we are. We are who Christ says we are. Patterns for us to think after him. You focus on the truth, you will love the truth and speak the truth. If you look on honorable things, honor will mark your life. If you seek out lovely things, your life will be lovely to others. If you dwell on that which is right, wrong will have no attraction to you. If you think on pure things, you will reflect purity. 
If you look for excellence, you will find it. And if you pursue praiseworthy things, your soul will be at peace. This is not about the power of positive thinking. I know people <coughs> teach about that, of just thinking good thoughts, that by doing so we can better our lives. The Apostle Paul wrote these words to people whose lives were already surrendered to Christ as yours. And, and then because of that, he is king and lord, and we can be rescued from futile thinking and made part of his family by faith. And Paul modernly taught these virtues, these things, so that by practicing them, we would experience a truly personal sense of God's presence and peace in our lives. So if you're not there yet, start there. Say yes to Jesus. And then as he reigns in your heart, then will transform your mind, transform your thinking. Think his good thoughts change your life from the inside out. That's God's word for us today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these amazing summary thoughts that you have for us to think in these couple of verses. And, and Lord, our minds can be all over the place in a given moment or day. And so train us, teach us, remind us of those good things you want us to think because you want to be working in us. You want to be transforming us. You want to be shaping our thinking into our actions so that we honor you. And you deserve all that response and all that glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I got a few questions. And you're going to want to answer this if you got it right. Pastor Terry is going to be my eyes so that I see who puts their hand up. Oh. Please don't shout out the answer. Let's see a hand, all right? Uh -huh. First question, what word is more closely associated with the word think? Four options. A, meditate. B, dream. C, presume. D, pretend. Who's got the answer? Jet. Meditate. Come on up here, Jet. Second question, which good thought from these verses is only found in this verse in our Bible? Ha, ha, ha. Come on up here. Yeah. Third question, which thought word is also used to describe the role of an elder? Mm -hmm. Honorable. Ah. Come on up Good. here. Fourth question, and last, who is our ultimate example of good thoughts? A, Paul, B, Nathan Kowalski, <laughs> C, Adam <laughs> Surf, D, <laughs> Jesus. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Come on up yeah. here. Tony Claremont passed me some little tickets, and I've got one for each of you. It's a golf pass. It's a Legends or Whirlpool. You can give it away or take someone with you. There you go. Good. All right. Nice job. Nice job. We're going to close our worship service this morning with a couple of songs. I encourage you to stand. This first one encourages us to build our lives on the Word of God, which will help us in that thinking of good thoughts that Pastor Martin just shared with us. So let's stand and raise our voices as we close our service. All right.
sync with all the this morning. Like Pastor Martin said, there's a ton of people on stage and we're making a lot of noise and yet we still manage to hear you, which is awesome. Before we go and eat, because that's still coming, we're going to play one more song. One that virtually everyone in the congregation will know. One that we love to rock out here at Grace, and so I encourage you to just sing along with us as we wrap up our service with How Great Thou Art.
in the gym and food is getting ready. Our request is that you make your way in there, find a seat, enjoy conversation around the tables. You'll be asked sort of a few tables at a time so we don't crowd the kitchen area uh, to get our hamburgers and hot dogs. And uh, we'll just enjoy. There's some drinks in there. You can help that. We'll just kind of wait until you're called to come up for the food, okay? Let's awesome. say grace together. Father, we're grateful that we can be gathered like this. We've been outdoors, but we're indoors. We're going to enjoy this barbecue just the same. So we ask, Father, that your blessing will be upon us around the tables, thanking you for the nourishment to our bodies and the fellowship to our, uh, in, in, that we enjoy together. We ask, Father, that you bless it and be praised. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Have fun. Amen.